Rainbows and welcome back to another video. Today's video is really exciting because we are doing a season one recap of my Royal Family series. So I plan to do this every season. This one is a little delayed because we're already like midway through our second season. But I do think this recap will be very helpful for you guys whether or not you have seen season one. Now for the recap, I am going to be showing you guys this pictures. It's kind of like a dramatic reenactment of you will with the pictures. I'm using those to tell the story and then I'll be telling you guys the story as I show you the pictures. I'm also just telling you guys the important information. So just the information you need to know for season two or for future seasons. So there are some things that I am skipping such as like someone dating someone before they got married or something like that. I do have the information about how I take my pictures in the video description below. And then I also have my Instagram below, which is at MiraRay underscore Royals. If you want to see more pictures of our current characters in our current season. Before we begin, some helpful information to know is that when I'm listing the children, I am usually listing it from oldest to youngest if you're curious about the ages and the order. One thing to know is that the crown princess or the crown prince means the heir to the throne. Also something to know, at the very beginning of the season, male children had priority over the female children for the throne. That'll change later. Just wanted to let you guys know that is the rule at the beginning of the series. So if you're excited for this recap video, make sure you hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and turn on your notifications if you have not already. And let's go ahead and begin. In the beginning, we had three kingdoms, Windenburg, Willow Creek, and Oasis Springs. In Windenburg, we have King George and Queen Isabel, and their children, the Crown Prince Henry, Princess Cora, and Princess Anna. In Oasis Springs, we have King Easton and Queen Arya, and their children, the Crown Prince Jared and Prince Adrian. A side note, Queen Arya was one of King George of Oasis Springs' sisters. In Willow Creek, we have King Derek and Queen Elena, and their children, Princess Alice and the Crown Prince Edmund. To start our story, Princess Alice of Willow Creek and Prince Henry of Windenburg were good friends and ended up developing crushes on each other as kids. Their parents decided to sign an official agreement for their arranged marriage. They became closer as teenagers and their wedding took place when they became young adults. In Oasis Springs, King Easton and Queen Arya arranged a marriage for their eldest son, Jared, with Lady Lindsay, the daughter of Marquis Edison and Marchioness Cassidy of Willow Creek. Lindsay and Jared did not like each other very much. Instead, Lindsay liked Adrian, Jared's younger brother. However, Jared ended up falling in love with a commoner named Nina. They met while she was working as a barista at a local coffee shop. Jared begged his parents to break off the engagement with Lindsay, and he even brought Nina over to meet his parents so they could see how kind she was. However, his parents did not approve of her background and status and threatened to disown Jared if he were to marry Nina. Jared went to his favorite uncle, King George of Windenburg, for help. King George empathized with his nephew and told him that he had recently discovered a new land. He agreed to let Jared and Nina become the king and queen of this new land, but in return, they would have to make sure that their heir married one of King George's grandchildren to ensure there would be a strong alliance between the two kingdoms. Jared agreed and brought Nina to their future palace to propose and tell her the good news. Nina was thrilled and they eloped a week later. Jared remained close with his brother, Adrian, but broke all ties with his parents, and Jared and Nina became the king and queen of the new kingdom, Brindleton Bay. After Lindsay and Jared's engagement was broken off, Lindsay's parents convinced King Easton and Queen Arya of Oasis Springs to agree to an arranged marriage between their daughter and Adrian, the new Oasis Springs heir. Meanwhile, in Windenburg, Prince Henry and Princess Alice had their first baby, Princess Amira. Amira was named the heir until Henry and Alice were to have a son. Moving on to Willow Creek, the Crown Prince Edmund and Princess Cora of Windenburg fell in love and they were engaged. However, on the night that Edmund proposed, Cora's mother, Queen Isabel, fainted outside of the Windenburg Palace and died of hypothermia before she could be found. Even though they were devastated, Edmund and Cora decided to continue with their wedding plans and they were married a few months later. Shortly after their wedding, King Jared and Queen Nina of Brindleton Bay gave birth to their first child, the Crown Prince Johan. On that same day, Prince Henry and Princess Alice of Windenburg gave birth to their second daughter, Princess May. Also that same day, King George of Windenburg passed away from old age, and Henry and Alice became the new King and Queen of Windenburg. 
Back in Willow Creek, Prince Edmund and Princess Cora had triplets, Prince Louis, Prince Jack, and Princess Isabel, or Princess Belle for short. Since Louis was the firstborn, he was named second in line for the throne after his father Edmund. A few weeks later, King Jared and Queen Nina of Brindleton Bay's second son, Prince James, was born. Meanwhile in Windenburg, King Henry and Princess Cora's younger sister, Princess Anna, started dating Lord Marshall, the son of Marquis Gilbert and Marchioness Layla of Brindleton Bay. Anna had dreamed of becoming an actress since she was a young girl, despite her parents' disapproval, so she didn't want to rush things with Lord Marshall. Anna moved to Delso Valley shortly after her 21st birthday to pursue her dreams, and her and Marshall continued to see each other. Back in Oasis Springs, the Crown Prince Adrian and Lady Lindsay aged up into young adults and were married shortly after. Eight months later, King Henry and Queen Alice of Windenburg had their third child and first son, Kellen, who was named the heir to the Windenburg throne. King Henry IV also made an official agreement with King Jared, stating that his oldest daughter, Amira, and Jared's son, Johan, would get married once they became young adults. A few months after that, Prince Adrian and Princess Lindsay gave birth to their firstborn, Princess Nea. After Nea's birth, Lindsay convinced Adrian's parents, King Easton and Queen Arya, to change the law in Oasis Springs to where the line of succession would not be based on the gender of the baby, but only on the birth order. The king and queen Queen agreed and Nea was named second in line for the Oasis Springs throne after her father Adrian. Oasis Springs is the first and only kingdom so far to change this law. A year after Princess Nea's birth, Adrian and Lindsay gave birth to their second child and first son, Prince Francisco, followed by the birth of twins Prince Michael and Princess Meghan the year after that. Months later, King Easton of Oasis Springs died of old age. Even though Easton was the reigning monarch, Adrian's mother, Queen Arya, was not convinced that Adrian was ready to become king and wanted him to focus on his family. However, she died eight months later, also from old age, and Adrian and Lindsay became the king and queen of Oasis Springs. That's the first half of season one. So let's review the royal families that we know so far. So in Windenburg, we have King Henry, Queen Alice, and their children, Princess Amira, Princess May, and the Crown Prince Kellen. In Oasis Springs, we have King Adrian and Queen Lindsay, and their children, the Crown Princess Nea, Prince Francisco, Prince Michael, and Princess Meghan. In Willow Creek, we still have King Derek and Queen Elena, and their son, Prince Edmund, who is the heir, and his wife, Princess Cora, and their triplets, Prince Louis, Prince Jack, and Princess Belle. So in the second half of season one, as a child, Princess Amira was bossy and hot-headed. When she learned that Oasis Springs had a female heir, she started to lash out by being mean to other kids, and she would constantly get in trouble. She always wanted to be in charge, and she didn't like being told what to do. Meanwhile, Princess Anna was becoming a very successful actress in Delso Valley and was ready to take her relationship with Lord Marshall to the next step. So Lord Marshall moved in and they got engaged. A few months later, both King Derek and Queen Elena of Willow Creek died of old age, and Edmund and Cora became the new king and queen of Willow Creek. However, at King Edmund and Queen Elena's funeral, Queen Alice of Windenburg froze to death in the palace gardens, leaving Amira and May and Kellen without a mother and King Henry IV a widower. Henry took Alice's death hard, but tried to stay strong for his kids. His sister, Princess Anna, decided to put her career on hold and move back into the Windenburg Palace with her fiance, Lord Marshall, to be there for her brother and to help with the kids. A year later, Anna and Marshall got married and they later had three girls, Ezra, Aurora, and Sadira. Anna and Marshall left the Windenburg Palace after Ezra was born and when Amira, May, and Kellen became teenagers. Anna decided to quit her career as an actress to stay close to her family and she became the Marchioness of Windenburg. Over in Oasis Springs, King Adrian and Queen Lindsay were looking for a potential future husband for their eldest daughter, the Crown Princess Nea. Adrian's brother, King Jared, suggested that they meet Earl Philip of Brindleton Bay, a child around the same age as Nea. Nea and Philip met and got along well, so Adrian and Lindsay made an agreement with Philip's mother, Lady Pearl, for their children to be married when they became young adults. Back in Windenburg, Amira was causing more trouble. She despised the idea of being married to Prince Johan of Brindleton Bay, and she acted out by having multiple flings and flirting with a bunch of different people. Johan was not happy about marrying Amira either. Him and Amira's sister, May, had grown close and ended up falling in love, but they tried to keep their 
relationship a secret. In Oasis Springs, King Adrian and Queen Lindsay's youngest son, Prince Michael, had a baby with his girlfriend, Lady Helena. They had a boy named Ajay. Michael and Helena were only teenagers at the time, so Queen Lindsay tried to cover the scandal by moving Ajay and Helena into the Oasis Springs palace. Michael and Helena were to be married as soon as they became young adults. Speaking of scandals, during this time, King Adrian of Oasis Springs started having multiple affairs. Some of his mistresses included Duchess Blair of Oasis Springs, Duchess Gillian of Willow Creek, and Lady Harmony, all of whom bore him illegitimate children. The most important mistress to know is Lady Harmony. The other two were able to hide their affair and make it look like their babies were their husbands. But Lady Harmony had a daughter named Charlotte, and Queen Lindsay found out about them. Adrian sent Harmony and Charlotte out of the kingdom and in hiding. However, Lindsay found them and went to the house they were staying in. Harmony ended up attacking Lindsay, which caused Harmony and Charlotte to be exiled. Harmony and Charlotte were sent to an unknown world, which was later discovered to be Sulani. Harmony told the king and queen of Sulani where she was from and why she was in hiding, and they agreed to keep her safe and hidden. However, the king and queen reached out to the other monarchs of our current kingdom so they could meet them. This introduces our fifth royal family, the royal family of Sulani, which is King Mahaka, Queen Lokolani, and their heir and only daughter, Princess Leilana. Other important characters to know from Sulani is King Mahaka's sister, Ali'i, her husband, Lotu, and their sons, Makai and Kona. There are other relatives too, but again, I am only going over the important information. Main fact to know about the Sulani royals is that they are mermaids. They have a tradition at their wedding ceremonies for whoever the heir marries to eat mermatic kelp to become a mermaid to ensure that their offspring would also be mermaids. However, this tradition is only for the heir, not for the other children. Anyway, Anyway, the kingdoms all met and agreed to form an alliance with Sulani as well. There were also some other relationships that started around this time. The Crown Prince Louis of Willow Creek started dating Lady Corinne. Prince Jack of Willow Creek started dating Lady Arya. We're actually going to call her Lady Ari, so she's not confused with the other characters named Arya. And then Princess Belle of Willow Creek started dating Prince Francisco of Oasis Springs. And the Crown Prince Kellen of Windenburg started dating Princess Meghan of Oasis Springs. Meanwhile, in Windenburg, King Henry IV had fallen in love with Lady Ava, the daughter of Baron Caleb and Baroness Shanna of Willow Creek. It had been almost 10 years since Queen Alice had passed away, so Henry felt comfortable enough to introduce Ava to his kids. Amira, May, and Kellen ended up really liking Ava, and Henry proposed to her a few months later. Henry and Ava had a beautiful ceremony, and Ava officially became Queen Evangeline of Windenburg. However, a lot of drama took place at their reception. Amira met Mackay at the reception, and they hit it off very well. However, Mackay did not know that she was already engaged to Johan, and they got a little carried away with their flirting. King Jared saw them and pulled Henry aside to tell him that he did not approve of Amira's behavior as future queen of Brindleton Bay, and he said he wanted to change their agreement to have Princess May marry Johan instead. Henry agreed, but he pulled Amira aside and yelled at her for embarrassing him and for the trouble she had caused. He told her that May was going to marry Johan instead. Although Amira was happy to get out of her arranged marriage, she was upset that her father yelled at her and she took her anger out on May, saying that May was the one who told on her and that she did it because she wanted to be the queen of Brindleton Bay. After the wedding, Amira and Mackay continued to see each other and they fell in love. Amira was free from her engagement with Johan, so her and Mackay could be public about their relationship. However, he was still hiding it from his mother. It was the happiest and most free Amira had ever felt and they were together for the remainder of their teenage years. A year after Henry and Evangeline's wedding, they had twins, Charles and Bellatrix. Shortly after they were born, Amira aged up into a young adult. At her birthday party, King Adrian of Oasis Springs died of an aneurysm. That is my detailed explanation of his death, but he died of anger in The Sims. But this left Naya to become the queen of Oasis Springs as a teenager. King Adrian's death really put a lot into perspective for Amira, and she decided to try and mend things with her sister May. She apologized and threw May and Johan a birthday party the following year in hopes that it would show her support for their relationship. After the party, Mackay decided to introduce Amira to his family. He had been putting it off for years because he had a feeling that his mother, Ali'i, wouldn't approve, and he was right. Ali'i had heard many rumors about Amira and her scandals as a teenager, and she told Makai that she would never approve of his relationship with her. Makai didn't know what to do, but before he could talk to Amira about it, Amira's sister, May, died. May's death was sudden, and it was said she died of embarrassment. Amira, Johan, Kellen, Henry, and the rest of the family took May's death very hard. However, Henry had to stay strong since Evangeline had given birth to their youngest daughter, Diana, on the same day as May's death. 
Amira ended up breaking up with Makai, which was hard for them both, but Amira knew that they couldn't be together since there was a chance that she would now be back in an arranged marriage with Johan, and also because of Makai's mother not approving of their relationship. Kellen was also taking his sister's death very hard, and he ended up telling his girlfriend, Princess Megan, that he wanted to take a break. A few years later, once all the teenagers had become adults, we had our wedding and baby season. The couples who got married and had kids, and this is not in any particular order, I'm naming the kids of each family from oldest to youngest, but that doesn't mean that that's the order from each of the families when the babies were born, if that makes sense. But the Crown Prince Louis of Willow Creek and Lady Corinne were married, and they had Prince Cornelius, Princess Genevieve, and twins Princess Julia and Princess Elena. Queen Nea of Oasis Springs and Earl Philip, who became Prince Consort Philip, they got married and they gave birth to the Crown Princess Arya, Princess Kimberly, Princess Aisha, and Prince Manuel. Prince Jack of Willow Creek and Lady Ari, they were married as well, and they now have Lord Gabriel and Lady Minerva. Princess Belle of Willow Creek and Prince Francisco of Oasis Springs were married, and they had Lady Ariana. The Crown Princess Leilana of Sulani married Lord Dean, and they had twins Prince Makana and Princess Samaria. And then finally, Prince Michael of Oasis Springs and Lady Helena, who already had Lord Ajay, they were married, but later they had Lady Rosalind. So that was our wedding and baby season, but now we're gonna go back to Amira's story. So Amira and Kellen, they had grown very close over the years that followed May's death. Amira and Johan's wedding had been postponed due to May's death, and Kellen saw how much Amira was dreading marrying Johan. Kellen knew his father had considered changing the law to be the same as Oasis Springs, where the heir would be the oldest child, whether or not it was a male or female, but he knew that his father didn't do that because he didn't want to suddenly take away the title of heir from Kellen when Kellen had been preparing his whole life to be king one day. But Kellen knew how unhappy Amira was, so he proposed a plan to his father, King Henry, and King Jared, and he said that he would step down so Amira would be the Wittenberg heir. He reminded them that his grandfather, King George, didn't say that Jared's heir had to marry one of Henry's children specifically, but that it just had to be one of King George's grandchildren, and Henry's sister, Anna, had three girls that Johan could potentially marry one day. So King Henry, King Jared, and Princess Anna all agreed, and Amira and Johan's engagement was broken off, and Amira became the official Windenburg heir. After this, Prince Kellen and Princess Meghan got back together and they eloped at the Island Bluffs. Amira also decided to reach out to Mackay to try to get back together with him. However, Mackay told her that he had already agreed to an arranged marriage since he thought him and Amira had no chance of getting back together. Amira was devastated, but Mackay promised that he would find a way to break off the engagement so that him and Amira could be together. And finally, during all this, Prince Louis of Willow Creek's wife, Corinne, found out from King Jared that her family had gone missing along with another noble family in Brindleton Bay. She agreed to go with King Jared to search for them, and they came across two new kingdoms along the way, the Kingdom of Selva Dorada and the Kingdom of Glimmerbrook, or Guangxi. That is when they discovered the realm of magic, and Corinne and Jared entered the realm to search for her family, and that is the end of the season. I did have a mini-series that followed Jared and Corinne into the realm of magic. It was just a mini series. It was like three episodes long, but if you're interested in that, I will link that in the video description below as well. But I hope this was helpful for you guys. I do plan on doing this at the end of every season. Sorry, this one is a little bit late, but I hope you're enjoying season two so far. But again, if you enjoyed this and it was helpful, hit that like button and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.